according to his purpose, say amen again. Amen. Then somebody who's had some suffering that's amen. had to be touched by the Savior, say amen. We are so blessed to be God's people in God's place, to learn of God's promises, so one day we can live with God in perpetuity forever by and by. Oh, how sweet it is to come here and worship a God in spirit and in truth, and to lift him up. The same one that we lift up has never let us down. And that's why we come here to honor him, to praise him and to magnify him for he is king. Yeah, yeah. We're thankful to the brethren who led us in our devotional period with great spirit. Yeah. We're thankful to Lincoln this morning who led yeah. us in prayer with great sincerity. Yeah. That's what this thing is all about. Yeah. That's what this thing is all about. Yeah. Drawing closer to God. Yeah. And it's a blessing when we have men who can lead us to the throne of God. Not with pomp and circumstance, but with great and grave sincerity. We come at this time as the great praying for many of our members. We have many members who are ill at this time, and who are in different avenues of recovery. Uh, Boston is one of our elders, Ronald Thickman. Uh, he is uh, recovering at this time. God has brought him through surgery. Uh, he is doing fairly moderately well. I know everybody wants to run and see him, but at least give him the Tuesday. Say amen if they can. Uh, because we know Brother Thickman, he's a man who wants to be helpful and entertain, but right now he needs his strength. Amen. Be with and pray for uh, Daisy Bird. Uh, Daisy uh, recently had open heart surgery unexpectedly. And we're praying for her. She's also doing moderately well. And if you know Daisy, Daisy's a tough, tough, tough lady. I went to see her and she's talking to me. She had surgery yesterday. Say amen. She's giving me instructions. Uh, so pray for Daisy, pray for Thick Pen, and pray for so, so many others uh, whose names I won't mention at this time. That's a word this morning from the Lord. I don't know what the Lord wants to do with it yet, but we shall see. Say amen. amen. Meet me in the gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 26. Matthew, chapter number 26. And for contextual emphasis, we'll start in the 36th verse. Matthew, chapter 26, beginning there at verse number 36. When you find yourself there, let's be standing for the reading of God's holy, inerrant, and infallible word. As you're standing, and perchance you're visiting with us on this morning, we want you to know that you are our honored guest. Prayer for something will be said on this morning, which will make you ask the question in your mind and mind and heart of hearts, what must I do to be saved? Matthew chapter 26 Verse number 36. Here, Matthew, that tax collecting Jew, is chronicling the last week of the physical life of Jesus the Christ. And here we enter in on Thursday of that fateful week. And here, the Bible reads as such Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there. What are you going to do over there, Jesus? I'm going to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And then he became sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow yes. to the point of death. Stay here. Not sit here, yes. but stay here wow. and keep watch with me. Going on a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup, mm, this cup, be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Yes. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. 
and said, couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked this question to Peter. Watch and pray that you will not be led or fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to them and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Wow. If you have some time this morning, I want to speak as the Holy Spirit shall lead me and great presentation and proclamation from this exclamation. Wow. How Gethsemane speaks to you with me. Right. How Gethsemane speaks to you with me. Wow. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us go to God in prayer. Devil and kind and gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what was, what is, and what will be as long as we keep our hands in your unchanging hand. Father God, be with everyone under the sound of my voice, Father, open their minds, their hearts, their spirits, their souls, and yes, even their ears, to a word coming straight from you via your man servant. Father, be with your man servant, Father, as I am weak, I am fragile, I am frail, and I am faulty. I first am a sinner. So I ask, for forgiveness of my sins. Upon our repentant heart, Father, I pray even now that you will pin the words that you want spoken to your servant and to this audience, Father. Father, speak to me and speak through me. This time allow them to speak to them so we may all clean up our filthy ways. Father, bless the word. Father, bless your servant. Father, bless us all as your children. All these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. The only name that matters. Amen. 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 How Gethsemane speaks to you and me. Wow. I want to sermonize and synopsize the solemn and situational surrender of our suffering servant and savior, Jesus the Christ. Here in Gethsemane's garden, we see Jesus betwixt between his indictment and his utterance. As a justice would soon be made manifest when he is drawn from judgment hall to judgment hall, eventually being convicted in Pilate's kangaroo court which would be the summation of six different court things. So Jesus would be before Honest, Caiaphas, the Sanhedrin, Pilate, and Herod. But here in Gethsemane, he is before the Father as he is soon to be before the thrones. Here, knowing he was indicted not for murder, for mercy. He fights with only one weapon. The only weapon that he knows. And that's not Peter's sword. That's not even fighting with clinched fists. But the only weapon that Jesus knows should be the only weapon that we know when fighting in spiritual warfare. And that weapon is prayer. Since y'all looking at me funny, let me remind you of something. Prayer changes things. Prayer moves mountains. Prayer soothes stress. Prayer makes giants seem small. Prayer desecrates mountains into molehills. Prayer brings faith to the fight. And with faith, you and I can win. I don't know about you, but prayer is important and is especially pivotal. And notice. Jesus 
Moses' prayer was not for him to gain material goods, but rather he prayed for a greater good, even if what was about to happen was not good. For Jesus already knew that his mortal life and body was nothing more than a seed that had to be planted into the ground, i.e. Joseph's tomb. In order to yield a greater cause. Give me some script with that little preacher. I'm so glad you asked. For it's John chapter 12 verse number 24. When Jesus says truly, truly, or surely, surely. I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies. It remains only a seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. What are you trying to say, Jeremy? I'm trying to say that I don't know about you. But somebody ought to have a shout in their mouth.
God where you're stopped with the Mickey Mouse prayers. So our prayers 
need to be prideful. Okay. To scrub the sin that we really have. Right. Oh, if I had time, church, we need more prayer meetings than business meetings. Yes. And more prayer parties than pity parties. Right. Right. Because only prayer gives direct communication from us through Christ to the Father. And it's a blessing to know that he who intercedes on my behalf, his name is Jesus. He who intercedes on my behalf first experienced prayer himself. That's why Gethsemane is so important to you and me. You and I need to know that when I pray, and I pray in the name of Jesus or through the name of Jesus, that Jesus himself also has an experience with prayer. He's not a novice when it comes to prayer. He has to pray for himself, by himself. And yes, he has prayers that are both answered and unanswered. That's why I can pray to him and through him because Jesus knows what it is for God to say yes. Jesus also knows what it is for God to say no. I was sad. My Lord, Jesus, understands my pain, my heartache, my heartbreak, and he understands what it means for a prayer to not be answered in his story for God's glory. Sometimes, and I'm going to get to the text, but sometimes, God don't answer your prayer the way he wanted to. Right, right. He will detour your story to get his glory.
or all you pray. And it's amazing, the Bible says that, you know, he got everybody with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Can I show you the hidden character of the text? The hidden character of the text is Satan. Jesus is getting closer to the cross, closer to his purpose. But the closer you get to your purpose, that's when Satan enters Satan.
Christian. Because you hurt and you speak to that hurt. Everybody in here has a gift. 
consider that you got a place of suffering. That could be in your self-esteem, your self-image. That could be in your marriage. Hello, somebody? That could be in your faith. That could be in your finances. That could be in your home. That could be with your children. That Gethsemane, that place where you suffer and struggle. Yeah, yeah. Every Sunday, we got to wake and shake you from that place. Yes, Because you got Gethsemane. Sleep. 
face temptation, wow. but you won't fall into it. Yeah. Hebrews 4, we need verse number 4, reminds us, of, we need verse number 14, reminds us that we're going to face temptation. Jesus faced temptation in every way, yet he did not see. That's what makes Jesus real and credible to me. That's why Hebrews 4 says, let us not approach the Lord of grace with confidence, asking for mercy and grace. Why? Because if he can have victory, so can he. That you pray. So y'all won't fall into temptation. With me, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What are you saying, Jesus? Right now, I am divinity wrapped in humanity. My humanity is about to be hung on the cross. My divinity is going to walk out the grave. My divinity right now is fighting because my flesh is being chipped at. And I feel my packaging eroding as I sit here and I pray. Don't you know the devil don't care about your prayers? He'll come in your prayer. He'll interrupt your conversation with God. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. He's like spring wireless. <laughs> He's trying to drop your call. <laughs> this ain't ever happened to y'all. But have you ever prayed and had the wrong thought at the wrong time? Yeah. Now I know you know this, but I've had times where I've sinned in prayer. Verse 42, let me, let me close this thing with John here. Verse 42. In verse 42 of the Bible, after he tells him that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, then he says he went away a second time and prayed. We don't know how much time has elapsed between prayer one and prayer two. But can I tell you something? If you pray the first time and it don't work, pray again. In this season. Number two, it's not always about God. Sometimes it's about you. Because sometimes between prayer one and prayer two, you mature a little bit. Right. And when you mature a little bit, your prayer changes. Yeah. That's why I gotta go back to what I used to pray for, because now I know better. Now I know more. I used to pray for a big house. Now I just pray for a house. I wish I had somebody else mature in here. You used to pray for a big Now you just pray for a
so the rest of them would fear. If the execution method was not to push off the cliff, it was to prepare a cup of poison or hemlock. And they would offer it to the first soldier. But humanistic tendency says, if there's one cup and a line of us, then we all go take a sip. Somebody miss your show.
But Jesus ain't going to drink what you don't give him. As long as you hold the cup, you got to drink from that cup. So give it up. Give that cup to Christ. Give that sorrow to Christ. Give that pain to Christ. Give those crying nights to Christ. Give those sleepless nights to Christ. Give that divorce to people that you ain't signed to Christ. Give those bills to Christ. Give that wayward child to Christ. I got a cup. I don't want it. I'm tired of living in Gethsemane where God has so much more for me. Since I want to drink it, but I can't wrong you